was the end of one more week, and also Friday. I was working on Johnny Jeborucci's file. He suspects his new wife of having a sugar daddy. She does. Randolph Lembowski, better known as Randy the Rat. Just another piece of scum keeping this city dirty. Just as I was about to give Johnny the bad news, I received a phone call from my buddy, Tony. Tony's a rookie cop from the downtown precinct. It was about my fiance, Melinda Melindas. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She was found dead. We were going to get married in the Bahamas. I already had the plane tickets, hotel, rent a car. I have to go to the crime scene. I need to see her. Just one more time. Who could be responsible for this? Think. Is this about me? Is this Lembowski's work? How many enemies do I have? Let's see. There's that guy with dry cleaners. Gang, get out of my way, you effing clown! I'm a detective, you bastard! I know people in this town that can take that ridiculous clown nose of yours and, and stretch it, reshape it, and shove it you to wear! I get to Mel's apartment. Mel, that's short for Melinda. I thought it was cute. Tony was already waiting for me. He gave me ten minutes. He warned me that our building was full of cops. Tried to stay behind the yellow tape so I wouldn't contaminate any evidence. Like I kind of did during the Bukowski murders. She was dead. The only way for me to concentrate is when I play basketball by myself. It helps me to focus. I've got to find out who killed her. Just as this thought flashes through my mind, I get stabbed in the back. Not figuratively, but I actually get stabbed in the back. I really don't think I've had this bad a day since my birthday fell on a leap year. Nobody bought me. With the knife came a note and blood. I read the note. It tells me to go to a bar in Fresno called Blue, where I would find the killer. I find nothing, so I decide to drink in hopes that the throbbing pain radiating from the gaping hole in my back would subside. I received a phone call from my buddy Tony. They found the killer. He told me to get over to the precinct ASAP. When I walk in, the suspect is already in the interrogation room. I'm stunned. It's a dame. That's woman in detective talk. Not only was she a dame, woman, but she looked just like my mouth. I'm sorry I killed her. I was in love with her too, she says. I slapped her around a few times. Nah, not for stabbing me, but for making me go to Fresno. Apparently that was a divergence. She rubbed me up too. She was like an animal. Her name is Samantha, and she was involved with this guy named Dr. Kowanski, a geneticist. She tells me Kowanski developed a machine that could transform animals into humans. This is when she hesitates. What, you gonna tell me you were an animal or something? I hate when I'm right sometimes. The doctor, who happens to be gay, transforms the monkey into a man and names him Sam, so they could be lovers. But Sam sees Kowanski as a father figure. Sam gets a job at the local candy store. Melinda was one of his regulars. This is where the story gets crazy. Apparently, Melinda was romantically involved with another woman. They would go out for twisted red vines together. Well, to make a long story short, Sam falls in love with Mel, but Mel likes women, so Sam gets transformed into a woman named Samantha. When she tells Mel about her monkey man past and her daddy lover, I guess Mel just couldn't take it. Plus the fact that Samantha looked a lot like Mel was a little too weird. And Samantha couldn't handle Mel being engaged to a man while dating a woman. So in a jealous rage, she murders Mel. It's simply a crime of passion. I guess if I were a monkey changed into a man and then a woman to be with another woman, I'd be a little pissed off too if I were shunned. It turns out you can do a lot with a monkey in the state of California, but you can't prosecute them. After the trial, we got married. As for the doctor, he was our best man. After all, if it weren't for him, there would be no Samantha. It's funny how something so sick and twisted can turn out so nice. I guess that's the beauty of life. You always get a second chance.